So as you see here, we have a site uh, that we built actually not too long ago based on some uh, sales data from, from AdventureWorks and some data that we've scrubbed and cleaned up and just made a little bit better for, uh, for demo purposes. And this is a pretty straightforward SharePoint site. Now, if I wanted to start creating SharePoint reports, it's a good idea to have, you know, have, have some way to see some of this ahead of time. So they, these are performance point reports. I've got a scorecard here that's tied in and driving all the driving results in these different areas. So as I drill in, we've got all these graphs and charts are automatically changing. I can add comments here that will let me share and, and collaborate with people and it will put a little flag there once the comment is in. I can come over here and right click and I can drill down to different areas. I can switch which measures or which, which you know, really columns of data that I want to look at which is terrific for end users because a lot of times they want to look at you know, five or six different things in a similar way, but it doesn't all fit well in one report. So it's very easy to come in here, select different measures, and say, oh, instead of gross sales amount and gross sales profit margin, I really want um, gross sales amount and gross sales profit. And we do that, and our graph automatically adjusts and trends over just like we expect it to, which is pretty cool stuff. So the other thing we can do is come down here and we've got something called a decomposition tree. This is a, this is a feature that used to be in a product called ProClarity and it was rolled over into SharePoint 2010 for performance point. This is going to let me click through and begin to very quickly see which states are driving the most sales, uh, what, uh, what month is really driving the most sales. Uh, they're all pretty much the same. So if we come into December and say, well, which item category is really drawing the most sales? Oh, definitely business items. So if we come back in here, we can say, now let me see which salesperson is really doing the best job. Eldon. So if I want to, what I can do is come in here and take this and convert it to a bar chart and see, wow, May was not a very good month. And I can send this over to one of my sales reps or one of my sales managers very quickly and say, hey, what the heck happened in May? What's going on? So some really cool functionality. We can also come in here and um, do a show details, which is going to do a drill through for us and get the raw data that's underneath it. And if we wanted to, we could come in and actually export that to Excel, open it up, and there we have it. Nice and neat. So that is very, very, very quick to do. Keep in mind, none of this data is in Excel. It's all being pulled from an analysis services cube underneath the covers for these items right here. We've also got uh, some regular old reporting services reports. In addition to that, we've got some Excel services reports. We'll come back to the reporting services report. Now this is the Power Pivot Gallery. So when you have Power Pivot reports, and you'll know that you have a Power Pivot report because you will be working in Excel, and you will have clicked on this Power Pivot tab and launched your Power Pivot window and imported a much larger amount of data than you can natively work with in Excel. So Excel has a one million row limit uh, natively. Power Pivot, um, you can bring in you know upwards of a couple hundred million rows uh, just from a whole number of sources. So we'll come back to that in a few minutes. I'll show you an example of how to build that and how to upload it. But we have a couple that we've already built. And so we can actually come in here and click on that. And Excel services renders it right here. And there's some cool things going on under the covers here. So if you want to know more about the architecture and how this data refresh works and some of those more you know advanced topics, please feel free to email me uh, or hit me up on Twitter. And I can make sure that you guys get some more really good information about that. But if we come in here, now we've got slicers. So we've got all of our power pivot functionality. If we come over here to daily sales analysis, we can do that here too. And we can say, well, I only want to see these years. And the very first time I click on it, SharePoint is going to employ a high-speed caching mechanism that's going to take all the data out of that power pivot workbook and upload it into cache within SharePoint so that the next time I click on something, it's significantly faster. There's not nearly as much delay. So the very first user that clicks on this, it operates similar to a query cache in SQL Server, for those of you who are familiar with that. If data is going to age in and out, uh, so there may occasionally be you know, a tiny little hiccup or something like that if 
you know, an extra two or three seconds. But if you can see under the covers of this spreadsheet, we're actually processing about 500,000 to 800,000 rows uh, every time we do a slicer and we, and we move it. So it's actually running very, very, very quickly. Um, if we come back over here, reporting services, we've got that report. And again, just a very standard sort of month-to-date service report. Uh, we can export that as a data feed, et cetera. Um, but what we really want to point out there is our ability to push these and publish them to any different type of library or folder out in SharePoint. So Power Pivot Gallery, that's pretty cool. Um, if we come back to that, and we also have a few different views that we can do. So the carousel view is kind of nice. Very good for demos. Not always so good for practicality, but very good for demos. It looks nice and flashy. The other thing that we can do, if we come over here, is we can create a report builder report right off of this workbook. We can open a new Excel workbook with all this data in it, or we can click on this and manage our data refresh. And we can come in and say, I want to enable data refresh for my Power Pivot workbook. And based on the schedule that we create, and the accounts that we tell it to use, and any particular data sources, you'll notice I have a few different data sources that are pulling data from there. We may want to set a custom schedule. We may want to specify different user credentials for different data sources, et cetera. SharePoint's timer jobs built into SharePoint are going to go out and refresh the data under the covers of that Power Pivot workbook, which is pretty awesome. Uh, it's going to keep that data up to date because obviously once you pull it down into Excel, it's stale. It's, it's, it is disconnected at that point. Um, although when you're in Excel, all you have to do is hit refresh data and it will, of course, refresh the data from Excel. So we've got a couple of different pieces of the stack here. We've got performance points, which is your dashboarding and your filters and, and your analytic reports. We've got reporting services reports for things like product performance or sales performance. We've got some regular Excel reports, regular Excel services without Power Pivot, uh, which also can use uh, all of these uh, slicers. Obviously, uh, this one has a bit of an issue. Um, but it works in the same exact principle, except this is a, a just a straight connection back to the cube uh, through SharePoint that's being stored and persisted in the Excel document, as opposed to Power Pivot, which is giving us all of that functionality embedded uh, within SharePoint to do the high-speed caching and work with significantly larger amounts of data that's going to give us a lot more flexibility in the long run. So a little tip, one of the things you'll notice here in our Power Pivot Gallery when I load this, you'll notice I have no grid lines, everything's nice and neat. That's a really good tip when you're, when you're going to publish things out to SharePoint, especially in Excel. If you're not using the grid lines for things like balance sheet reports or things like that, if you're just looking to do something like this, hide them. 